Hi, my name is Nell Barber and I'm a charcoal artist and I do mostly portraiture, but I wouldn't say that my portraiture is sort of a one-to-one -one ratio. It's never I'm drawing X and this is just a representation of such. Uh, if anything, it's more of an amalgamation of things that I might have felt either emotionally or mentally or just the people that, you know, become my sort of support systems in life as I navigate the art world. Uh, I think by leaving it open, it keeps me enthusiastic about the practice and gives me somewhere to sort of move as I mature and evolve as an artist. And each piece I like to add sort of these sort of fantastical elements. I think for me that's a way of expressing the immaterial in life. I think often in a world that's sort of uh, maladjusted in some ways, we have to find ways to sort of guard our hearts and sort of to suffer things to pass. And I think the immaterial often gets ignored as a result of that. So I try to find ways to sort of express the intangible with these fantastical elements, whether it be something that's kind of magical or something mythological. All of those things sort of for me is sort of exploring that which often gets ignored. And to some extent, I think as I mature and evolve, it allows the practice to evolve with it. So I would describe myself as someone obsessed with the light and the dark uh, and the gray in between. I think we all try to find ways to sort of live in the light and I think the shadow often gets ignored and it grows in the dark and things tend to spill over and they tend to affect other people. And I think by managing this, for me it's always through arts, uh, it helps me sort of stay enthused about the world around me and it helps me be a more social person. And in some ways it improves my relationships. Uh, and I think through sort of working in sort of this palette, not just trying to balance it uh, aesthetically, but also figuratively, I think that gives me something to look forward to. So as I sort of evolve as a person, I see the art moving with it. And in that way, it sort of keeps me sort of enthused with life and the people around me. This current exhibition is an exploration of the people that I spend my time with. Uh, when I say archetypes, I'm referring to personality types, personas, uh, certain stages of life that we enter. Uh, even as I, you know, move from being a, from a husband to a father, you know, I'm going through these archetypes, sort of these things of sort of adjusting feelings, sort of feelings of ambivalence, happiness, sadness, loneliness, all of the above. And this work is as much of a love letter to the people that I love, the people that support me, as much as it is to me sort of getting to learn myself and seeing what I'm projecting versus what I'm consuming as far as life. I would want visitors to take away a certain sense of interconnectedness from this exhibition. I think oftentimes we, uh, you know, in this world where we sort of harden our hearts to others and oftentimes we have trouble relating to people, I think for me as a person, I've found so much more value out of, uh, you know, listening to and enjoying the perspective of others who may not live like me or may, you know, be part of a different social class or ethnicity or culture. I think I'm in some ways obsessed with finding out things that I think are different only to really discover after getting to know people that were really kind of the same. And that juxtaposition is always interesting to me, how, you know, we're just as different as we are similar. And I think if we can sort of live with that balance, I think that's sort of a thing that we can sort of make peace with the world uh, in some sense. My future plans as an artist is really just to let the practice evolve as I do. I mean, as I mature as a person, I think it's important to get to know myself and get to know my feelings, what's behind my actions, why I do what I do. And in some ways, I get to learn more about the people around me too as I get better about learning about myself. So I think the practice will sort of move on its own. Uh, but even with that being said, they're all sort of, uh, I don't know, aesthetic things that I want to do with the practice as well. I'm very interested in the idea of dialoguing with other artists. And one artist that's kept, caught, caught my eye is uh, Alma Woodsy Thomas. Uh, from my understanding, she was born in the South and she moved to DC sometime around between her 30s and 40s. And, you know, when I see her, when I see portraits of her, she sort of reminds me of a family member. Uh, I see her and I think of like a great aunt in some sense. And her style with her sort of color palette and how dynamic it is, it's so contrary to sort of uh, the black and white that I'm so, you know, I guess I'm so comfortable with. 
and I'm always looking for opposites. Uh, as I said before, opposites are kind of interesting because one can't exist without the other. You can't have shadow without light. There's no light without shadow. So I'm always looking for the things that are different to sort of become more complete. So I would love to have sort of a dialogue through art with someone, you know, she's not alive anymore, but to someone who might have shared some experiences that I've had growing in the city, but, you know, might have projected those differently in art. And in some ways, I can become a more complete artist by doing so.